Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join with us today. Just over a year ago, Canadians elected a new government. The marching orders for us were clear. Build an economy that works for the middle class and protect our environment so we can leave a better, cleaner country to our kids. Voters rejected the old thinking that what is good for the economy is bad for the environment. They embraced the idea that we need strong environmental policies if we expect to develop our natural resources and get them to international markets. Canadians know that strong action on the environment is good for the economy. It makes us more competitive by fostering innovation and reducing pollution. Canadians value clean air and water, beautiful coasts and wilderness, and refuse to accept that they must be compromised in order to create growth. We agree. Since last November, we have worked hard to put in place a policy that gives life to those values, a new policy that we believe will create good middle-class jobs and protect the environment for our kids and grandkids. We approved resource projects that meet the highest environmental standards. We created a policy to put a price on pollution and an oceans protection plan to preserve our coasts. And we just announced our intention to phase out coal-powered electricity in Canada by 2030, all while expanding clean power sources. This phase-out will prevent more than 1,000 premature deaths and save taxpayers billions of dollars in health costs. Nous faisons tout cela parce que nous savons que le monde change et que le Canada doit changer avec lui. Les changements climatiques sont réels. Ils sont là. Et nous ne pouvons pas souhaiter qu'ils n'existent pas ou voter pour qu'ils disparaissent. Les Canadiens savent que nous devons commencer la transition vers une économie axée sur l'énergie propre. C'est un devoir que nous avons envers nous-mêmes. Nous devons nous assurer que notre économie est plus concurrentielle, mais nous avons aussi un devoir envers nos enfants et nos petits-enfants afin de leur laisser un environnement plus propre. Mais nous savons aussi que cette transition requiert des investissements et que cela n'arrivera pas du jour au lendemain. Pour financer ce changement vers un monde non dépendant du carbone, nous cr devons créer de bons emplois et générer une croissance forte. Canada is a country rich in energy of all kinds, conventional and renewable. The energy of today and tomorrow. That is a unique and tremendously positive place to be in the world. I have said many times that there isn't a country in the world that would find billions of barrels of oil and leave it in the ground while there is a market for it. But it isn't enough to just exploit that resource, resource for our short-term interest. Our challenge is to use today's wealth to create tomorrow's opportunity. Ultimately, this is about leaving a better country for our kids than the one we inherited from our parents. Today, we are taking a strong step in that direction. We are here to announce the Government of Canada's decisions on major energy projects and the fulfillment of some very significant commitments we made to Canadians during last fall's election campaign. We said that Major pipelines could only get built if we had a price on carbon and strong environmental protection in place. We said that Indigenous peoples must be respected and be a part of the process. And we said that we would only approve projects that could be built and run safely. That's how we've come to today's decisions. First, the Government of Canada has approved the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Expansion Project. This pipeline will twin an existing line that has been in operation since 1953, which extends from Edmonton, Alberta, to Burnaby, British Columbia. The project will effectively triple our capacity to get Canadian energy resources to international markets beyond 
the United States. It will create 15,000 new middle-class jobs, the majority of them in the trades. This major initiative will get hardworking Canadians back to work, put food on the table for middle-class families, and grow and strengthen our communities. It will give much-needed new hope to thousands of hardworking people in Alberta's conventional energy sector who have suffered a great deer, deal over the past few years. Aside from the many and obvious economic benefits, we approved this project because it meets the strictest of environmental standards and fits within our national climate plan. We will require that Kinder Morgan meet or exceed all 157 of the binding conditions set out by the National Energy Board. These conditions address potential impacts on Indigenous communities, the protection of local wildlife, and the offset of greenhouse gas emissions during construction. And let me say this definitively. We could not have approved this project without the leadership of Premier Notley and Alberta's climate leadership plan, a plan that commits to pricing carbon and capping oil sands emissions at 100 megatons per year. We want to be clear on this point because it is important and sometimes not well understood. Alberta's climate plan is a vital contributor to our national strategy. It has been rightly celebrated as a major step forward both by industry and by the environmental community. Le plan de l'Alberta prévoit le plafonnement des émissions liées au sable bitumineux à moyen terme, mais permet une augmentation de la production par rapport au niveau actuel. Aujourd'hui, les oléoducs du Canada sont utilisés à pleine capacité. Cela veut dire que si la production augmente de façon significative, nous serons forcés nous serons forcés de trouver d'autres moyens d'acheminer le projet jusqu'au marché. Ces autres modes de transport, comme le transport sur rail, sont moins sécuritaires que les oléoducs. En effet, nous savons que les nouveaux oléoducs à la fine pointe de la technologie sont la façon la plus sûre d'acheminer ces ressources vers les marchés. C'est un fait. Par conséquent, La création de nouvelles capacités en matière d'oléoduc est la décision la plus responsable que nous pouvions prendre pour assurer la sécurité de la population et réduire les risques. Nous ne pouvions pas non plus approuver ce projet sans mettre en place les normes et les capacités exemplaires en matière de sécurité maritime prévues dans le nouveau plan de protection des océans du gouvernement du Canada. Le prolongement de l'oléoduc TMX mènera à une augmentation globale du trafic maritime de 13 dans le passage Burrard, et le plan de protection des océans permettra d'assurer que tout risque lié à l'augmentation de la circulation maritime soit réduit de façon adéquate. We understand and share the deep and abiding sense of responsibility British Columbians feel for our spectacular West Coast. Indeed, it is a personal issue for me. I spent much of my childhood with my grandparents on the coast and on the water. I worked and lived in BC for years as a teacher. Now, I have heard and listened very carefully to the many diverse perspectives that exist in BC on this project. Indeed, one of its most articulate and substantive critics is a caucus colleague, Terry Beach. Others will be opposed to this project for their own reasons. We respect that, and we respect their right to hold and voice their beliefs. But to them and to all Canadians, I want to say this. If I thought this project was unsafe for the BC coast, I would reject it. This is a decision based on rigorous debate, on science and on evidence. We have not been and will not be swayed by political arguments. 
be they local, regional, or national. We have made this decision because we are convinced it is safe for BC and it is the right one for Canada. It is a major win for Canadian workers, for Canadian families, and for the Canadian economy now and into the future. Second, we have also approved the Line 3 replacement project. This project replaces over a thousand kilometers of an existing pipeline from Hardesty, Alberta to Gretna, Manitoba. It will create 7,000 new good jobs for tradespeople and it will be required to meet or exceed 37 binding conditions from the National Energy Board. À la fin de la journée, c'est une question de sécurité. Au sujet de la canalisation 3, la réalité est celle-ci. Cet oléoduc vieillissant a vraiment besoin d'être remplacé. Une fois terminé, cette infrastructure permettra d'augmenter l'efficacité, d'améliorer la sécurité en milieu du travail, ainsi que la protection de l'environnement. Elle permettra également d'assurer que la technologie la plus récente soit utilisée pour prévenir les fuites. Ces deux projets sont d'intérêt national. TMX a une valeur stratégique unique puisqu'il permettra aux ressources énergétiques traditionnelles du Canada d'avoir accès à des marchés internationaux au-delà des États-Unis. Et la canalisation 3 permettra de renouveler une infrastructure vieillissante et garantira notre capacité à fournir des ressources à notre partenaire commercial le plus important et le plus précieux. Ensemble, ces projets créeront des milliers de bons emplois pour la classe moyenne du Canada. Ils généreront également des milliards de dollars de revenus pour tous les paliers gouvernementaux. C'est de l'argent que nous pourrons investir dans nos hôpitaux, nos routes et nos initiatives en matière d'énergie propre. These projects have received government approval because they meet our standards on the environment. But not all pipelines meet these strict criteria. Today, we are also announcing that the Government of Canada has directed the National Energy Board to dismiss the application for the Northern Gateway Pipelines project. It has become clear that this project is not in the best interests of the local affected communities, including Indigenous peoples. The Great Bear Rainforest is no place for a pipeline, and the Douglas Channel is no place for oil tanker traffic. Even before we formed government, we were clear about our intentions to protect the Great Bear Rainforest and Sea. This unique and beautiful ecosystem thrives with diverse wildlife and supplies an abundant and sustainable economy to the tens of thousands of people who depend on its health. It is a jewel of Canada's west coast. Finally, I am also pleased to announce that we will keep our commitment to implement a moratorium on crude oil tanker shipping on British Columbia's north coast. After consulting at length with people who live and work there, including Indigenous partners, we've heard firsthand how detrimental crude oil tanker traffic is to this region. Very shortly, we'll introduce legislation to make this tanker moratorium the law. As a grandson of BC, I strongly believe that this moratorium, coupled with the rejection of the Northern Gateway Pipeline, is the right call for the people of this province and for Canada. The four decisions we've announced today were all made after rigorous consultation and examination of the evidence. We believe that they will help provide the growth and resources we need to spur Canada's clean energy transition. We believe they prove that responsible resource development can go hand in hand with strong environmental protection. We believe they are safe, responsible, and in the interest of all Canadians. Most importantly, we believe they will help achieve the vital mission Canadians sent us here to achieve, to make progress, to leave a cleaner, more prosperous country to our kids than the one we inherited from our parents.